When I did my very first Kumekucha post, 16 years ago, last May, my driving force was to help open people's eyes. Yeah, because politicians are very tricky people. And as I keep on emphasizing on this channel, politicians, even the ones you love so much, are not your friends. Now I leave it to history to judge me whether or not I have been consistent yeah, in that mission. But on today's show, I want us to look at something yeah, that will definitely be a aha moment for very many of us. Now this is something that is happening in our current political scene. And I believe yeah, we'll scale up as we head to the 2022 general elections. And I believe this will be a major tool yeah, for anybody who grasps it yeah, to be able to see right through politicians. I kid you not. And right through the lies of politicians in Kenya. Now, please allow me a second to back up a bit in our history, yeah, so that we fully understand what it is I'm talking about here. Yeah, because it didn't start yesterday, this thing. In the 60s, we had a politician from the combination called William Mbolu Malu. And my political lecturer used to mention him all the time, yeah, to illustrate to me the style of politics in Kenya. Mbolu Malu was the legislator of a constituency called Kilungu in those days. I believe these days it's called Kaiti in Ukambani. And my political lecturer didn't have any patience for politicians who never went to school. And what really used to eat him yeah, was a relationship, very close relationship of this politician with my political lecturer's political hero, yeah, Tom Boyer. According to my political lecturer, Honorable Mbolu Malu had no clue, although he was a member of parliament. And so, before he went to any major political rally, he would see Tom or get him on the phone and he would say something like, Naskia watu anasema, kwa sababu mimi sijasoma, Mimi sio kiongozi mzuri. Mboya niwaambie nini? And of course Mboya was a very crafty politician. Yeah, indeed his nickname was Sungura Mjanja. So Mboya would respond. Kwenda waulize, wasomi walikuwa wapi tukipigania huru. Kwenda waulize, wasomi wako wapi hata siku hizi wananchi wakiumia. Wasomi wanasaidia wananchi kwa njia gani? And Bolu Malu would get very excited, yeah, and go out there and wow the crowd, wow his supporters, frustrate his political enemies, yeah, using what he had been given by Mboya. Actually, he was a Mboya psychophant, because Mboya in those days had his point man countrywide, and that is why some people really feared him. Yeah, and others said that he was headed straight for the presidency of the Republic of Kenya. And I guess that is why he had to be stopped at all costs. Now let's fast forward to the year 2003. After the historic general elections that had removed Kanu from power for the first time since independence, yeah, giving victory to the National Rainbow Coalition Presidential 
candidate Emilio Stanley Mwaikibaki. Now apparently before those elections, Mwaikibaki had made a deal with Ray Laudinga on how they were going to share cabinet slots. It was supposed to be on a 50-50 basis. Half the cabinet Kibaki, the other half Ray Laudinga. And his LDP party. I remember at the time I started getting very upset. Because like most Kenyans at the time, yeah, I was sure that Kenya's second liberation had come. This was a brand new start. A brand new Kenya. Zero tolerance to corruption. No tribalism. Etc, etc. And now though these legislators, allied to Ray Lodinga, complaining all the time about something called a memorandum of understanding, yeah, which President Kibaki had reneged on. Now at that time, Raila said nothing. Yeah, the leader of LDP and the one who had been conned out of cabinet slots, he kept mum over the issue. But his foot soldiers, hey, eh? while going all over the country, repeating again and again that Mwai Kibaki had conned them out of cabinet slots. Now, I must confess that I missed something very important. Yeah, I only realized it much later. And what I missed is that if you listened carefully to what the politicians were saying, complaining about this memorandum of understanding with Kibaki that had not been honored, if you listen to them carefully, you would tell yourself, this is Ray Laudinga speaking. Just like the earlier example I gave you with Mbolu Malu, the Kambani politician, these guys were being coached on what exactly to say by the most experienced politician amongst them at that time, Ray Laudinga. But Ray Laudinga himself said nothing. And so the common man would not get upset at Ray Laudinga for upsetting the apple cart. Yeah, we want a new Kenya. We're determined to get a new Kenya. What is this maneno about a memorandum of understanding yeah, and positions in government? That is not important. Now, fast forward to the present. There are certain politicians allied to one side of the political divide who all sing the same tune. Indeed, many of these politicians are first-time legislators. Many of them do not have any experience in politics. But they're very loud, they're very persistent, and they talk a lot. And it is obvious that somebody coaches them on exactly what to say. Of course, these politicians are not at the same level of education as Bolu Malu was. But they all repeat exactly the same thing according to how they've been coached, just like robots. And by the way, this is a very effective political strategy because we all know that if you repeat something enough times, even if it is lies, even if it is not factual, people will start believing it. Yeah. It is the basics in any lesson on propaganda and influencing the masses, yeah, which is exactly what a politician in Kenya has to do. But the problem with these politicians allied to this side of the political divide is that they use the exact words. Yeah, so that when you listen to them, if you know their leader well enough, you will say this is their leader speaking. In my view, it would be much better if they grasped yeah, the message and then used their own words. But the truth is, they don't. Yeah, and let me give you solid evidence that they don't. Because when you don't use your own words, what happens is that it is very easy to trip you up yeah, on a live TV show or somewhere where you're being asked questions. Yeah, it's very easy to trip you up. So that you open your mouth and you start saying something that can never be understood. You remember the politician who is a senior, very senior learned friend, a lawyer by profession. You remember when she was asked on Life TV, please 
explain to us in simple language what the bottom-up economic policy is all about. Explain it in simple language so that we all understand. Her response? It is from the bottom-up. The report asks, from the bottom-up? No, from the up to the bo <laughs> What? It is from the bottom up, but no, it's also from the up to the bottom. Aye, 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 aye. Yes, that is what happens. That is what can happen. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying only one side of the political divide behaves like this. Actually, politicians right across the board play their game of politics precisely in this way. Yeah, but then I guess the other side tend to use their own words, but they're coached still on what to say. Not all, but most of them. And my problem with this is the following. When people elect you to any post, they have elected you to represent them, not to represent another politician. And so, for example, if you're a member of parliament somewhere in central province, and something called the BBI comes up, which is going to give you more constituencies, is going to give your people more funds. Isn't that what your people want? That is what you're supposed to support. For the sake of the people who elected you. Please, don't get confused. Not for the sake of Kumekucha. Not for the sake of the people who support BBI and you don't understand them. No. For the benefit of the people who voted for you. Period. It doesn't matter what Kumekucha thinks or anybody else. The people who are important are your electorate. But what you do is that you repeat like a broken record. Oops, I know many younger people don't understand that one. Yeah? You repeat like a parrot. The same thing you've been coached to repeat. We have other priorities. This is not the time for BBI. People are looking for positions. We don't want BBI. But how relevant is that to the people who elected you? The people who need more money on the ground? The people who need more constituencies? Yeah, which impacts on the resources being allocated? Yeah. How relevant is positions to those people? How relevant is timing yeah, of this change of the constitution to those people? Of course it is irrelevant. You know, psychology is a very interesting subject. Because when you repeat something often enough, other people also pick it up. So that if you meet somebody on social media and you ask them, according to you, why do you think BBI is the wrong way to go? And they will promptly repeat the same, same phrases. It is not time. We have other priorities. This is people looking for posts, positions in government. This will increase public expenditure, etc., etc. And so now reggae has been stopped. BB has been stopped. Some people say temporarily. Most of us say permanently. So why aren't those people who are saying the other priorities following up on those other priorities? Why? Why haven't those people who are talking about people looking for positions stopped looking for those positions? You have to convince us that looking for positions is wrong. It's illegal. According to our constitution. And according to them. <laughs> As we head to the general elections, let us quickly identify Parrots, yeah, and separate them from real politicians. Let us quickly identify parrots and deny them our vote. Yeah, do you want to vote for a parrot? If yes, get a real parrot yeah, and put it on the ballot. Or get a real robot that has been programmed. Yeah, put it on the ballot. At least then, you'll be very sure where you stand. Yeah, and what is more, at least you have a chance of reprogramming this robot, reprogramming this parrot. Yeah, but when it's a human, <laughs> you
You have no chance. You're done. Now, before I go, I'd like to really encourage you. If you've not yet taken in WIB number 67, to go for it. Yeah, details on your screen right now. All you need to do is send a blank email to that email address you see. And you'll get an automated immediate response. Giving you payment details. On how you can get all the WIBs. Yeah, number 1 to number 67. And catch up. So that by the time I release 68, you're up to speed. Parrots and programmed robots. Don't vote for them. Indeed, this is why I like a man called Oscar Sudi. Yeah. At least Oscar Sudi uses his own words. Oscar Sudi talks from his heart. Yeah, not like some people who talk like parrots or programmed robots. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.